everyone. Um, lovely to see you all tonight. And you've, you've made it through the rain and through the Extinction Rebellion. So how are you all feeling? Give me a cheer if you're feeling all right. <laughs> Great news. So my name's Yolanda Ohini and I am a biophysicist. So what's a biophysicist, you might ask? So I use physics or the phys physics techniques to look and probe um, biology around us. And specifically, what my PhD has been um, on is brain imaging. And so I was really interested in imaging because I think it's amazing when you can um, use physics or different tools to see things that we aren't able to usually see with our eyes. So, um, yeah, I've been working on that for quite a while, but another project that I've been having was actually finding my inner selfie. So, um, what's that, you might think? Now, have any of you ever taken a selfie? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Now, um, there's actually 93 million selfies are taken every day. And 100 selfies are actually posted on Instagram every second. So I reckon probably like 100,000 or maybe 10,000 um, selfies have been posted on Instagram just while I've been talking. Whoa. And we love it, don't, you, don't we? Like, I love it, scrolling on Instagram, looking at the selfies, looking at the like, holiday retreats and all of those kind of things. But suddenly I thought to myself, it's not often that you see pictures of inside yourself. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I'm at UCL and there's loads of experiments going on at UCL. So what I can do is sign myself for this, up for some of these experiments to be able to get images of inside my body. Now, the first experiments that I signed myself up for, um, I had probes going in all sorts of places. So um, I don't think I'll talk about this today. But my friend, actually, who works in the lab, he said, you know what, I need a volunteer to take an image of a heart. And I was like, brilliant, I can get my first in a selfie. Now, um, the heart's an amazing organ, isn't it? It's like the, the most enduring muscle of the body. Um, and you're probably quite familiar with an image, something like this, the fore chamber of the heart. But when I went to get my inner selfie, the camera of choice was an MRI scan. And so the, I was prepped, ready to go, and, it, and an MRI scan is a magnetic res resonance image. And so this uses huge magnets in order to stimulate the water inside your body to get an image. And so would you like to see an image of my heart? Yes. There we go. And it's beating, I'm so pleased. <laughs> now, actually, my friend who works on heart imaging, he's actually interested in fetuses' hearts. And so you might be quite familiar with the ultrasound technique. So um, pregnant ladies go and have an ultrasound and they use um, uh, sound waves to look in the body. But actually, MRI is able to capture um, some other information that you might not have been, been that you might not have seen before from an ultrasound. So, um, if we look at a baby in the womb, this is what the baby would look like using an MRI. And um, if you can, can you see there, its little heart is beating a lot faster than our heart beats. And actually, the size of a baby's heart is about the size of an almond. Um, and so what my friend does is he, um, he uses quite clever maths to be able to actually look at the, how the blood is flowing within the heart. And so he's able to get these really cool images of the vectors of how the blood is actually moving in the heart. So just let me flip back an almond and the blood flow in a heart which is amazing that we're able to probe um, such small things at such high detail. Now, when we think about the heart, we often think about love, don't we? Now, there's the dark side of love is when you get love sick, which takes me to the next organ, the gut. <laughs> so, 
I have a, another friend in the lab who she is interested in gut imaging. And I think the gut is a place that we don't really think about that much, really. And it's kind of, oh, it's kind of gloopy, isn't it, when you think about the gut? And um, what's amazing is that um, there's actually more bacteria in your gut than there are cells in your body. So I was quite interested when she said, we need a healthy volunteer to have their gut imaged. I was like, yes, I can get my next image. And um, they said, don't eat anything because we want to clear your gut out. I was like, okay. So I went over to the hospital and, and I sat down and they gave me a drink and they said, okay, you have to drink this drink. Um, and the reason you have to drink it is to get your gut going you know, because we want to take some images of your gut. So I was like, okay, fine. And then she said, oh, you might need to go to the toilet before we go to, um, to have the image. I was like, okay. So she came back out and said, okay, the scan is going to be 20 minutes. And I said, I haven't been to the toilet yet. So that was the longest 20 minutes of my life, I have to tell you that. Now, um, the heart, we're quite attuned with our hearts, aren't we? We're, they're beating, it's beating like every second or so. Now the gut is moving and it has these contractions about every 10 minutes. So that's the reason why I had to have a 20 minute scan. So um, let's just have a look at the gut. So this, let me orientate you, it might be a bit difficult to see. So at the top here is the liver, and then there's my back, so I was lying on my back to go into the MRI scanner, and this is the large intestine. Now, there's a, it's actually a cine image of the gut as well, so it's, I've sped it up a little bit because we can't be sitting here for 20 minutes, can we? So, let's see, that's the gut moving. Now, wait for it, wait for it. There's going to be a contraction any second now, Oh, there it goes! <laughs> now, when I saw that, I was like, whoa, that is going on inside me every 10 minutes or so. That's crazy. Um, and I think the reason why um, they were taking, they were looking at this study was actually because um, at the moment, um, one of the most useful ways to look at um, the, or the, the function of the gut is to use a particular chart called the Bristol stool chart. <laughs> and so actually, let's, let's just dwell on this for a moment. Now, type fours, you're doing all right. Type ones, mm, type sevens, not so great. And so actually using these uh, MRI scans, we're actually able to get so much more information about the motion and the movement of the gut uh, compared to this. <laughs> so um, let's go from the gut or the bottom to the top, up the gut-brain axis and up to the brain, which is the area that I'm really interested in. And I was so pleased when my supervisor said, Oh, Yolanda, I need uh, someone to volunteer for a brain image. And I was like, this is what I've been waiting for. <laughs> and he said, actually, would you be, you, if you would like, you can bring a CD in um, so that you can listen to a CD while you're having your MRI image. I was like, hang on, it's 2019. I don't have any CDs. <laughs> um, so... The reason that he asked me to bring in a CD is because actually one of the features of an MRI scan, if any of you have ever had one, is that they're really, really loud. So they sound something like this. Yeah. So pretty, um, pretty loud. Now, um, on the one hand, like, it's really annoying. On the other hand, I think I've been out to some nights in East London that sound a little bit like that. <laughs> Um, and so there's, some, there's one group who actually thought, you know what, um, it, let's try and change the, the sounds of the MRI. And so it's actually the magnetic gradient. So you need a, a magnetic gradient in order to capture your image. And so they thought if we change how these gradients switch themselves, um, we can have some different sounds. And they use some really clever maths to do this. Um, don't ask me about this afterwards. Um, but this is what the, um, the resulting MRI scanner sounded like. It 
so who's into Bach? <laughs> Which is, I think that's, it's a really amazing um, piece of work. And um, if you want to see what the normal MRI would look like, it looks a bit like this in the paper. And then actually they were able to collect um, a brain image with this new music MRI sequence. And it looked like this, very similar, it's very impressive. Now, unfortunately, my supervisor didn't have this sequence. Um, but he was able to scan my brain, so this is what I've been waiting for. My brain! And it's a little bit meta looking at your brain, I have to say. But, and you're probably um, quite familiar with images like this. Um, and so this is a structural image of the brain, and you might have seen it on programmes like House. Um, but what I'm interested in is actually I've been developing a technique which is not looking at the structure of the brain, but it's looking at the function of the brain. So actually your brain, like your heart, like your gut, um, responds to the signals from your heart, from your respiration. And actually, being able to probe the function of the brain gives us uh, more understanding about certain conditions like Alzheimer's disease. And so, um, I have to say that um, from doing physics as an undergraduate and now to be using this, the, this physics to probe brains, I think is really cool. Um, and so all that I've got left to say is thank you for listening. And if you ever take a selfie, maybe just think and reflect what's inside of yourself. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.